In this video, I will show you how to create a simple GUI for your scripts on Linux. Script execution is something that usually happens in the background and users don't usually interact with scripts directly. If a script does require user interaction, it's often just a simple prompt like are you sure, yes or no. Or select an item in a list, write a number. And then the script just continues doing what it's supposed to do. But what if the script requires a lot of input from the user, or if it has to present a lot of data in a certain way? One solution is to prompt the user for every input, which will probably annoy them. Or in case of presenting data, just print everything and flood the console, which will confuse and probably annoy even more. A better approach would be to create a simple and clean GUI for your script, so that everyone is comfortable using it. And that's what I will show you in this video. Now before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps so you can skip any part if you want. For this video I prepared a simple script, so I will open a console. And let's run the script. It's called random API. First, we get some information about the script. This one is called random API example because it gets data from a random API on the internet. It prints out the platform, so we are using the 6.5 Linux kernel, then the path to the script, which is currently executing, and a simple message from the random API. Then we have the first prompt please enter a number of users greater than one. So let's do 20. And here we've got 20 users from the random API. It is presented as a kind of a table with the user name, ID and the avatar icon. Then we get the next prompt. Please enter a row number between 1 and 20. So here are the row numbers. Let's go with 11. Then we get some more detail about the user 11, which is Donny Walter. So yes, this is the one. Again, we have the icon, ID and name. And in addition, we have email and phone. And that's it. All of this data was randomly generated by the API. So we had a few prompts and the data was presented as a table and as a sort of a card. It looks clean, but it would have been nicer if the icons were real images and not just text. And instead of typing the row number, it would be nicer if we could just click on the row to select it. And it's easy to find the right row if there are only 20 users. But what if there are more than 100 users? Or what happens if I give invalid input? Now let's run the script again. Number of users, let's say, nope. Invalid input, so okay, it just prompts me again. Now let's get 100 users. Now we get 100. Not so easy anymore. Let's take this one. 23. Sammy Wolf, this is correct. Now, by the way, the avatar images were also downloaded from a random API, and I downloaded them into the dev shm folder, which is inside the RAM memory, inside a RAM disk. In a previous video, I benchmarked two types of RAM disk on Linux, and they're fast. So if you want to create a RAM disk on Linux or just want to see the benchmarking, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. So this script is a perfect candidate for a GUI and the GUI that I will use is called Zenity. The command line tool called Zenity gives you simple GUI templates that you can configure and then call and display from inside your scripts. I am now here on the official Zenity manual page. And here you have listed the GUI templates that you can use with simple examples. Those are meant to replace your prompts or just to display data. So for instance, let's see the calendar prompt. You get a simple explanation plus available options. And then you get a short example how to use it and how it looks like. So this one is just a simple calendar prompt where you click on the date to select it. Then we have, for instance, a color selection dialog. Again example how to use it and how it looks like or a file selection dialog here it is and again a simple example or 
a forms dialog so the user can input multiple fields plus a calendar. You can basically add as many fields as you want and you can hide the calendar if you don't need it. Again, example is here. You need to display a list or grid. Here it is, you can. Need a message dialog, maybe an error message like this one or a warning, here you have it. Or a question dialog, are you sure? Or just an info dialog, here you have it. You can even create notifications, like this one, or this one. Or give a hidden password prompt, like this one. You can give a progress dialog, with a nice progress bar. Or a scale prompt dialog, like this one. Or any random text entry, a very simple one. Or display whole HTML sites, from a file or from an URL. And here is an example, a simple accept the license dialog. So as you can see, using Zenity you can replace many prompts and that's also what I did with the previous script. I have prepared a modified script version by the name Random API Zenity. This one should do the same things as the previous script, but instead of prompts inside the console, this one uses the Zenity GUI. So let's see how this works. And here is the first dialog. Again, we get information about the script. So this is the random API example. We are using Zenity version 3.44. Platform is Linux. And this is the script that we are currently executing. Then we have a message from the random API. And here is the first prompt. Please enter a number of users greater than one. Let's say that I don't care and I will write nope. Okay. Now we get a message box, invalid input. All right. So let's enter, for instance, 50. And I will just confirm by pressing enter. What you just saw was a simple progress window, also done in Zenity. And now here we get a simple table, but this time we also got images. This is a simple selection dialog, where you can select the user by double clicking or by pressing the OK button. And also a nice feature about this one is that if you type, you get a small search box. So let's say 671. It found one, 6718. Let's say I want to select this one. I will double click it. And here is the user detail. Here we also have a big avatar image, the name, ID, email and phone. So all of this was done using Zenity. If you want to use Sanity, of course, first you need to install it. So let's do this. By the way, the distro that I'm using here is called Blend OS. Blend OS is an immutable all-in-one Linux distro where you can use different package managers at the same time. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install Blend OS on a USB drive, and this one is running from a USB drive right now. So if you want to run an all-in-one distro from a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. To install Zenity on a Debian system, just write sudo apt install Zenity. In addition, my script also uses jq, wget and curl. Curl and wget are used to sending requests to the random API and jq for parsing the JSON response. And that's it, install. Obviously everything is already installed on my machine, otherwise we would not be able to run the script. And now I will show you what the differences are between the old script and the new one. So let's open the script. On the left hand side is the old script and on the right the new script using Zenity. I will not go through the whole script, I will just show you the most important differences. The first one is when we need to enter the number of users. The old script is doing this using a simple read prompt. This one just reads input from the console. And the new one is instead creating a Zenity dialog. This one is a simple Zenity entry dialog with only one input field. Next, in the old one, if we don't input a valid number, we just get the same prompt again because we call the method recursively. In the new one, we get a Zenity error dialog, which we also saw previously. Once the dialog is clicked away, we call again the first dialog, also recursively. 
The next difference is where we fetch data and display the table. I will disable the text wrapping. In the old one, we are getting the data from the random API and display the whole thing as a table inside the console, again with a prompt at the end to select a row number. In the new one, we do the same thing, getting the data, but instead of displaying the table inside the console, we pipe everything to the Zenity command. And this one then displays a nice list. We also add different columns and of course, images. The download progress on the old one is displayed inside the console and it's just the default progress bar of the parallel command. In the new one, we also use the same progress bar, but this time we pipe it to a different function, which is up here. And this one is again using Zenity, this time as a progress bar. Here we also use the auto close option, so the dialog is closed once 100% is reached. The final difference is where we display the user detail. In the old one, we are just writing the user detail as plain text to the console, and that's it. And for the new one, we are creating a nice HTML and we are giving it again to the Zenity command. And then this one displays the nicely structured HTML together with the big avatar image. The rest of the script is basically the same. So it's more or less replacing reads and echoes with Zenity. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. If this Zenity dialog seems a bit familiar to you, it probably is. In a previous video, I showed you how you can develop cross-platform GTK applications using csharp.net and there we created a very similar GUI. So if you want to develop cross-platform GTK applications yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.